Hey, look in the description down below for the links to all of these books on Amazon. Hey, so there's a lot of books about wrestling out there, obviously, because wrestling is an amazing wide topic with so much history and politics and drama behind it. So I thought I'd break down my personal top five books. Yes, there's going to be a lot of books missing from this list because I've not read them. Notable mentions are going to be things like Jim Ross's Slovenocker. It's not going to be on this list because I've not read it yet. So let's jump right into it. Minute number five, Spandex, Screw Jobs and Cheap Pops by Carrie Dunn. It's a book about British wrestling, but it's a book about British wrestling before this massive resurgence in British wrestling. So I don't remember the date it was published, but this book, I read it also right before British wrestling made its comeback. So before uh, the likes of Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate, Trent Seven, El, well, El Aguero sort of, because he was already sort of a household name, became household names through WWE. It's about how British wrestling went through this massive phase of getting huge with the likes of uh, Stephen Regal going to WWE and the British Bulldog uh, getting huge, and then how it went through this period of being super underground, just being a couple of promotions here and there, progress had just become a thing when this book was written and it's a really cool look at the side of British wrestling that we're not seeing now because right now British wrestling is huge yeah I know since the WWE have come here it's kind of gone a little bit more low-key uh, as compared to what it was a few years beforehand but British wrestling is still bloody huge there's so many shows going on I mean I'm going to a WWE pay-per-view in less than a month's time and this book is a really cool way to learn about the history of British wrestling and it has interviews with people who are actually like massive names now the likes of El Ligero I'm pretty sure there was an interview with uh, Pete Dunne and Pete Dunne telling how he uh, used to like squeeze under a it's like someone's feet in a car at the age of 13 to go to shows. Interviews with Paige's family and how important they are to the British wrestling scene. It's an awesome read for someone who wants to learn about British wrestling. And uh, it goes as far back as the likes of um, Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks, Johnny Ace, etc. And I just think it's a really fascinating read. In at number four is Cheating Death, Stealing Life by Eddie Guerrero. <sighs> I guess this is a little bit of a cop-out because Eddie Guerrero is my favourite wrestler of all time and I'm pretty sure he always will be. Such a massive influence in my life and I'll be honest, I cried at the end of this book. I even cried throughout this book. It's an autobiography written by Eddie himself and it was literally finished probably right before his death. Um, there is a foreword and afterward about his life um, and it's... it. <sighs> Eddie Guerrero was such an influential figure in the WWE. He was the first small guy that really made it. Yes, you had Chris Benoit and you had uh, Bret Hart who was a small guy and Shawn Michaels who was a small guy, but Eddie was the true almost high flyer, not including he who shall not be named Chris Benoit. And it just shows how he struggled in life, what it was like growing up in a wrestling family. He talks about the Mexican scene, which is a really cool insight to have because you don't really hear about that a lot um, in uh, the Western world, at least. And it's just really touching. And uh, if you're like me and you love Eddie and you grew up loving Eddie and idolizing him, it is a must read because it's it doesn't just talk about wrestling, it talks about life, it talks about the lessons you learn in life, what's important in life, and it's it's an amazing read. In at number three, Eggshells Pro Wrestling in the Tokyo Dome by Chris Charlton. Chris Charlton is without a doubt the foremost expert on everything New Japan. Make sure you check out all of his work, his uh, Twitter, his website, and he has some other books which I've not read yet, and they are a fascinating dive into the history of uh, wrestling in Japan. He's kind of like Dave Meltzer, but purely for Japan. Um, he, Eggshells is an amazing book. It is very concentrated on the Tokyo Dome itself. He talks about all 64 shows up until the publication of the book, which was late 2018. Um, so he talks about up until Wrestle Kingdom 2018, so he doesn't have the most recent one. Um, but he talks about 
the history of those shows, uh, the matches, uh, their influence on the Japanese um, industry, which, like, to me, all I know about Japan is New Japan, kind of know a little bit about Noah, I know some about DDT, and I know about All Japan Pro Wrestling, but this is it's such a... De- because surrounding these Tokyo Dome shows, he he explains what led to these Tokyo Dome shows, what the political shifts um, in these shows were to make these shows happen. It I knew nothing about how big Anoki's influence was about um, Japanese pro wrestling, how amazing uh, the Great Muta's and Giant Barber's influence was. I know these wrestlers, but I don't know them for their politics behind wrestling. I know Michinoku, but I don't know his relevance behind wrestling. I didn't know Anoki's uh, son-in-law, who took his name, uh, was so influential in pro wrestling. I don't know that uh, New Japan was uh, shortly owned by Yuke's, uh, who make the WWE games, well, formerly did. They've now split with 2K. It's, like, it, it, it's so, it just, it, it, it gives you this history of Japanese wrestling, but is focused around this one part of Japan. It's focused around the Tokyo Dome, and it gives it this sort of center to, to grind, to ground it. And it's so fascinating. It's the most recent one on this list that I have read, and I, that I doubt recommend it. I think it's a little bit harder if you are still kind of new to wrestling and kind of just want to learn the history of wrestling. Maybe it's not one for you then, but if you are in deep and you want to expand your knowledge that even more, 100% get this book. Our runner up, I'm Sorry, I Love You by Jim Smallman. Jim Smallman is the, uh, I think, former co-founder, well, he is the co-founder and former owner of um, Progress Wrestling. He now works for the WWE, sort of with NXT UK. And it is a look into the history of professional wrestling. This is a really great book if you want a very broad um, review of history. It's obviously named after HBK's final last words when he retired Ric Flair um, in 2010, I believe, at WrestleMania 24. Uh, it is, uh, it's great if you want a really wide history of wrestling. Like I mentioned, it goes heavy on American wrestling scene, but it does touch on um, the Japanese scene and the British scene. Obviously, the British scene because Smallman is influential in the scene in its revitalization with progress. Um, he he does talk about he does give anecdotes in the audiobook of uh, little bits he's added afterwards, which is really fun. So I do recommend the audiobook. It is read by Smallman himself, who is a really engaging reader. To be honest, it's one of the better audiobooks about wrestling that I've listened to. Um, so it's definitely one I recommend if you want a very broad uh, place to learn about the history of wrestling, it's a good starting point. And even if you are a little bit knowledgeable, knowledgeable about it, it is also good to hear about this guy's opinions of wrestling who... He's actually pretty influential about the indie scene, especially if you're British, like myself. In at number one, we've got The Death of WCW by R.D. Reynolds and Brian Alvarez. Let's be honest, it's not really going to be anything else. Okay, there are a couple other great wrestling books, but... (sighs) The Death of WCW, I have the complete final edition, which came out... It's like the ultimate re-release edition that came out fairly recently. By recently, I mean about five years ago. Uh, It is such a great depth of knowledge. Again, it goes back to the roots of WCW in and pre NWA, uh, pre Crockett promotions. Uh, it's got a lot of history about uh, WCW and the American wrestling scene. Um, it is such a treasure trove of knowledge of American wrestling and how, how, how WCW went from nothing to everything, to nothing, to everything again, to being bought by Vince McMahon for nothing. Uh, it is. It took me like two and a half years to read because I read a lot of books at once. But it is so fascinating. It even has all the numbers. It has anecdotes. My edition has little things called lessons not learned, where it relates the issues that WCW had, uh, takes it and compares it to the big promotions or the big US promotions. Uh, WWE, TNA, and Ring of and Ring of Honor. I think he brings it up once or twice there. So, stuff like, hey, WCW wasn't making new stars. Guess what? 
WWE for a long time weren't doing that. They're still kind of not doing that now, and it's stuff that Alvarez and Reynolds touch on. Um, Reynolds and Alvarez are obviously big names in the wrestling business, so, I mean, you can't go wrong with their opinions. Um, and again, a lot of fact, some opinion mixed in with that fact, but it makes it a little bit more of a compelling read. It is a long book, especially for it, its subject matter being big, but also small. So it's a long time, but it is concentrated on one company instead of being a long time and a lot of companies. So the death of WCW 10th anniversary edition is definitely my number one wrestling book. To be honest, even though it's number one, I recommend you read all five of these. And to be honest, just read as many wrestling books as you can. Like, I'm the only person I know that reads them. So if you do read them or are interested in them, please let me know in the comments down below. If there are any you have suggestions for me to read, please let me know. I'm not the biggest fan of autobiographies, except for Eddie's one. But if there's anything about the history of wrestling that you want me to read or you have that you think I should read, please, please let me know. I would absolutely love that. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you go out and read all five of these books or get the audiobook version. I wish I had an Audible sponsorship because then I would have given you like a link to download them because they're so good, but I can't. Um, but yeah, please, please go check out these books if you love uh, wrestling as much as I do. And let me know if you do and subscribe for more. I'm going to be talking about some more wrestling and a lot of other nerd shit that I geek out about. Thank you for listening and watching.